Good morning, church family. Today is the 20th of August, another week of hot temperatures, but I'm starting to feel fall in the air just a little bit. I think it's cooler in the morning, and this week's supposed to be a bit cooler. Let's hope for, well, the hurricane on the west coast isn't going to make it here, but there's a depression out uh, in the Gulf of Mexico that just might bring us a little moisture sometime, for sure in South Texas, which is a good thing. So anyway, uh, welcome everybody to the Method Milshu Methodist Church. A special shout out and welcome to all visitors and all listeners on Channel 6 and Facebook when that happens. My name is Jay Cage and I'm the liturgist for the month of August. Linda, I thank you last week for taking my place the week before, but you're sitting there, so I'm going to thank you again. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody, you notice the, the uh, attendance pads? that are at the end of the pews, pass those down and uh, sign them. Of course, we, we want to know everybody that's here and keep a record and be able to recognize you. And also, uh, there are some prayer pads that if you're so moved and want the church to pray with you about something, fill those out and we'd be glad to join in. Uh, don't forget that we have, uh, we, we don't pass the plate any longer in the church, but the, the um, oh gosh, the word left me. But the offering plates are at the back, and you can leave your, your tithe there. Now, by way of prayer, nothing has really changed from what I said last week about Kearney Scoggins, Wanda Schaefer, Mag Ann Reynolds, Bob Donnelly, my niece, our niece, Cage Terrio, and the Guerra family. But Haley mentioned to me Ms. Angeli, and I'm not sure I know this Ms. Angeli because it's not Pat but she goes to the church over on earth, was actually taken away from the church this morning in an ambulance, and they're afraid she may have had a, a stroke. But uh, anyway, they took her to, to Lubbock, and let's keep, let's keep her and her family in our, in our prayers. Does anybody know who I'm talking about, her first name? It's not Pat, but she's of the Angeli family, and so let's, uh, let's be sure and keep her uh, in our prayers. Let's see, by way of announcements... Of course, tomorrow, Monday, we have the ladies' Bible study at 9 in the morning, the men's Bible study at 6 in the afternoon, all in the life tree, right? Everybody, I know we are, but uh, keep that in our mind. And uh, I, somebody else that wasn't here last week that I talked about at the beginning of school, Case and Jack, how did school get started for the two of you? Good? What's two plus two? We're in good shape. And then I learned in the middle of the week that Kate started school. She's pre-K. Don't want to forget. Is he pre-K too? Axel is pre-K? Oh, my goodness gracious sakes alive. Well, anyway, I wanted to make sure and mention uh, Axel and Will just being a young man here to to uh, let, allow us to watch uh, grow up. So uh, anyway, I, I, and David, I've got you for, for, an, for something you'd like to say. Okay. If, you've, if you haven't seen them, the, the signs are here. I'm not happy. They're not very professionally done. But uh, we did what we were supposed to do. We did cover up the First United Methodist Church sign. And I am working with another sign company to see if we can come up with something better than what we got. From a distance, they look great. But when you get up on them, my OCD uh, mannerisms kind of just crawls all over me and I it's it's it's, it's shoddy craftsmanship at work so we're going to try to do something about it but we do have signs and uh, hopefully we'll have them fixed in the future thank you well I've noticed the signs and I'm, I'm I think they look nice but I hadn't just gotten right up on them and looked at them so uh, we'll keep that it we'll keep that in in our minds too any other announcements that I've left out or somebody's aware of that I'm not perfect we're going to turn it over to the choir. Y'all are ready, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat>
Well, good morning. Um, it is great to uh, be here this morning and see some uh, faces back in church that have been gone for a little bit. I'm not going to name any names, but uh, <clears throat> uh, at least some of them, you know, the initials start with a C and an M. But anyway, I'm just messing with, I, I got I to gotta give some people some hard time. But it is uh, great to see everybody here this morning. Uh, if you haven't been in a while, uh, it is great to have you back. It really, truly is. Um, I know uh, with summertime, um, it's uh, a lot of traveling, a lot of things going on, uh, but also, you know, school's back in, so everybody's coming back to church, uh, which is a good thing. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it's, uh, it's really great. I'm uh, glad that uh, David got up and talked about the signs. Uh, we've kind of been on a long journey trying to get those signs uh, taken care of um, and I will say the job was not done very well. The installation, the signs look great, uh, but uh, the installation wasn't as good. So I'm uh, glad that uh, David's uh, moving on. There's a story behind that, uh, 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 but uh, uh, I'll just I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. You know, we happen to we happen to be uh, outside getting these signs installed uh, last week. Uh, and a guy just pulled up in his truck and, and got out and said, hey, y'all having trouble with your signs? And uh, yeah, and uh, there's another guy, you know, a guy with another sign company, and, he, and we're kind of working with him. I think that was kind of a God thing, honestly, because he just, he just pulled up. Uh, he just happened to be in Muleshoe at the time. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, but uh, and sometimes these things, you know, it's a journey. It's a process. Um, <clears throat> but we do have... It is official now because our signs say Muleshoe Methodist Church. So y'all got to stop saying first. Because <laughs> I'll be saying it to myself for, for, for a while yet. But we are now Muleshoe Methodist Church. But anyway, so let's, uh, let's come together. Uh, uh, for those of y'all who are listening later, uh, my name is... Uh, uh, yeah, my name is David, <laughs> Pastor David McAbee. I'm pastor here at Muleshoe Methodist Church. It's good to, it's good to uh, uh, be here this morning. Um, it is a blessing uh, to see your faces. Uh, I just got back from Spade not too long ago. Uh, I do have some good news. I did. I, I want to mention this before um, um, I get, go into the prayer, our prayer time, uh, <clears throat> but I just want to give a little bit of an update on Bob Donnelly. Uh, he is doing a little bit better. Um, and I talked to him this past week. He's wanting to get back into preaching. Uh, so I'm going to have him uh, do one Sunday a month out in Spade. Um, it's probably going to be a while before he's up to, uh, you know, feeling good enough to, to uh, drive all the way to Muleshoe. Um, so it's, you know, but he's, he's wanting to get back into preaching and helping me out uh, and, and stuff. So uh, praise God for that. Um, but uh, please do keep... Uh, uh, Bob and his wife in your prayers. Um, he's still struggling with things, um, but he's doing a little bit better. Um, and that is that's a good thing. Praise God for that. Yes. Amen. Uh, but with that, uh, I don't think there's anything else that I'm thinking of that I need to talk about this morning before we get into, into worship, uh, uh, moving into worship. But uh, it is just really good to see you all here. It's really good to see some some kids back I just it. I'm I'm just doing well today, despite the heat. Despite the heat, that's probably it, you know, the nice thing about uh, being out here in in this part of Texas is is the humidity isn't as bad, so it actually cools off overnight. I grew up in Oklahoma, <coughs> central Oklahoma, so when we'd have hundred degree weather, it'd only get down below maybe eighty nine <laughs> overnight, and then so you just start back up again. <clears throat> in the sweat box. So, but we're, it's a glorious day today. It's a glorious time of year. Uh, we are slowly moving to fall. I think we're going to have what they call an Indian summer in the fall, but as long as it ain't 100 degrees, we're going to be fine. <laughs> uh, but it's all good. So if you would please uh, just join me in a time of prayer. 
Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to worship as a family, brothers and sisters in Christ um, at Muleshoe Methodist Church this morning, but with all our brothers and sisters around the world. And Lord, we uh, lift up to you um, uh, the situation in earth this morning. Lord, we, we don't have a lot of details on that, but we uh, uh, do offer our uh, prayers and, and, and well wishes uh, for that situation, Lord, that uh, uh, this individual has gotten taken care of and, and has gotten to Lubbock. Lord, and, and uh, the hospital, uh, the profession, medical professionals are taking care of her. Uh, Lord, we just ask for you to be with them, uh, with her and, and with the, the doctors and nurses as they figure out what's going on. Uh, Lord, we ask for the Holy Spirit to guide them in their, in their care of her. And Lord, uh, I lift up this morning to you all the uh, concerns and issues, uh, spiritual, physical, financial, emotional, whatever issues they are in our community uh, here in uh, Muleshoe Methodist Church, but here in Muleshoe as well. Um, we just lift all that up to you, Lord, and, and we ask for you to guide and encourage and to strengthen us in our times of, of, of joy as well as our times of trouble. Uh, for you are Lord of all and King of kings. And Lord, I especially want to lift up this morning uh, our, uh, the people out in Maui, Hawaii, on the island of Maui. Lord, um, what a tragedy, uh, crisis that's happened there in Maui, Lord, with these wildfires. And although the, the wildfires are done and over with, Lord, now for about a week, uh, Lord, there's so much destruction. They have a thousand people missing. Uh, last, uh, last I heard, and close to 100 uh, confirmed deceased. Uh, Lord, we just ask for you to be with that community, with those people in, in Maui, Lord, um, that you continue to, to encourage them and, and to comfort them. And Lord, we ask for you to guide your church to assist uh, those individuals uh, in whatever way we can, uh, whether here from Milshu or from anywhere in the world, Lord. Uh, Help us to be your hands and feet. Uh, help us to encourage uh, our brothers and sisters who are hurting. Uh, it's just a great and glorious thing, Lord, that you care for us so much and that you love to work with us and in us and through us. So we just ask for you to, to do that which you can through us. And Lord... <clears throat> Very shortly here, we will be moving into our time of offering. Our tithes and offerings, Lord, are, are our way of giving back to you. And it's not about Mule Shoe Methodist Church. It's not about the Methodist movement. It's not about anything but your kingdom, Lord. May you take what we give back out of our bounty, by, out of the blessings that you have given us, and make your kingdom greater, Lord. Multiply what we give a hundredfold for your glory. And Lord, as we come together this morning to worship here at Muleshoe Methodist Church, we just ask for you to be with us, for the Holy Spirit to, uh, uh, to indwell us and to teach us and to encourage us. And it's a good and glorious thing to be together this morning, Lord. As we come together as a family, the family of God, we say this morning our family prayer here with, with our brothers and sisters, but with our brothers and sisters around the world as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ who's part of bliss. Praise the Spirit. Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You may be seated, and would the children come forth and meet Cheyenne for children's time? Good morning, friends. Come on down. Good morning. How are we this morning? Good. How was our first week of school? What do we think? I'm really curious to hear what Kate and Axel think about your first week of school. What do you guys think? Do you have fun? Do you like your teachers? Good. That's all that matters. I'm glad you're having fun. Okay. So, I was looking at the adult sermon for this Sunday morning, and I was thinking, how on earth am I going to make this make sense for littles? This is kind of a tough one. Good luck for the adults, too. It's kind of a tough one to talk about. I I feel for you this morning. But then I thought, you know, I need to just dig deep enough and figure out what is the simplicity of this message, and I found it. Are you ready? I have a story for you guys. We love stories, yes? Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. So, one day Jesus was talking to his friends. You know, said Mary Magdalene, sometimes I get really discouraged. Why is that, Mary? asked Jesus. There are some things that I've been asking God for for a long time. I pray and I pray and nothing ever changes. Sometimes I wonder if God even hears me. Do you guys ever feel like that? Like, God's pretty busy, isn't he? And there's lots of people praying all around the world. And sometimes we feel like maybe our prayer gets lost in the shuffle of all of the things that he has going on, right? Yeah. Let's see. Ah, said Jesus. That is hard. I see your point. Let me tell you about a story. Are you all ready for the story? Okay. Once upon a time, there was a very powerful man. He was the most powerful person in his city. He was the judge. He had a big, fancy chair up on a platform by the city gate. He sat up there all day in his elegant judge's robes. People came to him from all around the city so that he could solve their problems. One day, as he sat there, he looked at the line of people waiting to talk to him, and he thought to himself, my goodness, it is nice to have such an important job. All of these people with so many problems, and they all look up to me for help. I must be very special. Excuse me, sir, came a voice from down by his feet. It was a little old lady. Her hair was all gray. Her back was bent, and she leaned on a cane. Excuse me, Your Honor, but my neighbor is causing me trouble. He's supposed to be renting my field and sharing the harvest with me, but now he's saying that it is his field, and he won't give me anything. This lady kept coming back and back and back. She really, really wanted help from this powerful man. And what ends up happening is she comes back so many times. She bothers the judge so many times that he finally says, all right, I will help you, okay? But I want you to relate this to when you pray to Jesus. Now, sometimes it takes a while for him to answer our prayers, doesn't it? But he's never going to push your prayer aside. He's always going to try his best to answer, maybe not on our schedule, maybe not on our time, but he's always going to respond to your prayer. You guys believe that? Good. Okay, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Y'all repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing me to pray to you every single day. And thank you for always answering my prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, here we go. How'd I do? Good. Okay, good. (laughs) 
blessings or celebrations you want to share this morning? We served around 120 for snack pack for the first time in about eight weeks, I guess. So that was a good thing. And we will pack this Wednesday at 530 at Dillman, anybody that wants to help. So come join us and we'll sack for two weeks and then we'll do it again in September. We're looking forward to a good year there. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Stand and join us as we sing, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, He is holy and just, by His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true, by His mercy He proves He is love. Great is the Lord, and worthy of glory, great is the Lord, and worthy praise. Great is the Lord. Now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great Trust him now. I 
You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 18, verses 18 to 30. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this ask, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left all we had to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you would, uh, please join me in a brief moment of prayer. Come Holy Spirit, silence me and uh, open my heart, my mind, and my ears to what you would have me speak, to what you would have us hear. Subdue my words and let them be instead yours. I pray this in your most precious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So yeah, this is a tough one. Uh, I think there's a lot of tough things in, in Scripture, uh, but this is, this is one of the slightly harder ones. Um, <clears throat> just because, you know, it's not, it's not ever any money and power. Um, however, uh, I, you know, Cheyenne, I think you did a really good job in, in, in deflecting this into something meaningful. So let's see how well the pastor can do on that. So, uh, but uh, this, uh, this morning, and, and I believe I've actually preached on this uh, topic before uh, on this very uh, instance. The um, uh, interesting thing about this event, uh, uh, we often is known as the young rich ruler. Um, it kind of depends on which uh, uh, gospel you read, because uh, this uh, account, the story happens in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, and it's really interesting uh, that uh, probably this guy wasn't as young as as that term "young rich ruler" might imply, but he definitely was somebody of of import, uh, somebody important in in the community. Um, otherwise, I don't think they would have called him a ruler. <clears throat> Probably not uh, as high as a king, but pretty pretty important in the local government, at least. But what is going on here, and what is the importance here? Now, oftentimes, many times when, when this uh, particular, particular Scripture is taught, preached on, um, uh, one of the big focuses is, is uh, you know, you shouldn't have money. You know, money is evil. Power is evil. However, 
I would uh, have you turn your attention to 2 Timothy. <clears throat> or excuse me, 1 Timothy, not 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. And if you can uh, find that and, and, and keep that earmarked in your head, because we're going to be, uh, this is very important, you know, what Paul says in reflection to what Jesus says. But in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9-11, to Paul says this to Timothy, a, 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 a student of his, um, but he's also saying this to us. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation to many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds, some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, Timothy, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Now for me... <clears throat> In my understanding, in studying Scripture, both Old and New Testament, Paul's statement here is very true to the Old and New Testament, to the nature of the Gospel as well. Oftentimes, we shorten that phrase to money is the root of all evil. And that's not what Paul said. Paul says, the love, the desire... The lust for money is the root of all evil. When uh, this man comes to Jesus and he says, good teacher or good rabbi, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus' response, and oftentimes Jesus does this a lot, when you ask Jesus a question, he usually responds with a question. Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. And here's a short list of not all Ten Commandments, mind you. <clears throat> and the guy says, of course, I've kept these since I was a boy. And Jesus' response to him is, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you own and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Now, oftentimes we interpret that to mean you have to be poor to follow Jesus. Now there definitely is some traditions in the Roman Catholic Church, for example, there is a vow of poverty and other vows that you have to take to, to follow Jesus uh, as a priest or as a monk. But I don't think that's what Jesus is doing here. What Jesus is doing here is overturning our mindset. Today, and even in the ancient Near East, ancient world, <clears throat> whether you're talking about Roman, Greek, or Jewish culture, the concept of, of uh, who has made it was very important. In an ancient world, whether you're talking about the Jew or the Gentile, if you had health, wealth, and progeny, then you were favored of God in the Jewish culture or in other cultures, gods, plural, little g, uh, plural. That's how you knew that you were loved is because you had things. But Jesus is telling us here that that's not the case. 
He's overturning this man's world as well as those around him. The disciples, the crowd who hears this. Because the important thing to this man was not God. The important thing to this man was his position, his power, and his wealth. Jesus is telling him, you don't love God. You love what God has given you. That's a powerful statement. And of course, the disciples, especially Peter, speaks up and says, well, who can be saved? I mean, we've given up everything for you, Lord. And Jesus' response to Peter and the crowd around him in this instance is verse 29, Luke 18, verses 29 and 30. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or, or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age. and in the age to come. God gives so that we can give. God loves so that we can love. It is not about giving up. It's about loving. John Wesley, who you may or may not know. If you don't know anything about John Wesley, you should do some research on him. He's a pretty interesting character. And boy, I mean, like, seriously, a character. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, one of the things that he said, and I'm abbreviating uh, his statement on this, but in talking about wealth and money, <clears throat> um, John Wesley said, uh, you should work as much as you can. As hard as you can. Save as much as you can. And give as much as you can. The importance here, and the thing that I'm getting at, is that it isn't about what you have, it's about what you give. And whatever it is that stands in the way of you following Christ, whether that's money or a position or desires of other kinds, give them up and follow Christ. That is what's important. Anything that we have in our life can become a burden. It can become a stumbling block and can take us away from Jesus. This morning in Spade, we sang one of my favorite hymns because two reasons why it's my favorite. One, it's short. And two, it doesn't take long to sing. <clears throat> but uh, and, and it's actually not very complicated of a song, but that is the hymn, Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything will be added unto you. The world tells us what's important is stuff. And what Scripture tells us is important is us. 
it's hard to recognize that people are image bearers. That you can look into the face of your neighbor, no matter how great they are, how bad they are, how horrible they are, how wonderful they are, and see the face of God. If all you are pursuing is wealth and power. That's how you make a child nothing more than a thing. Because they become nothing more than a commodity. That's how your neighbor becomes not your neighbor, but just somebody in your way. In verse 27, Jesus again he is replying to who then can be saved. Jesus replies, what is impossible with us, with man, is possible with God. Now understand that phrase. It doesn't say for. It says with. It's a powerful distinction, I know. It may not seem like much. But it's those little words that matter the most in Scripture sometimes. We don't have the ability to save ourselves. God saves. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit saves. That is eternal life. That is the great treasure. Greater than anything else in this life. And whatever it is that stands in the way of pursuing that should be given up and set aside. And understand that I'm not telling anybody here that you need to be filthy poor or filthy rich. You need to be in pursuit of God. Regardless of what else is going on in your life. What you have or don't have is unimportant. If you don't have Jesus. Love. It's a powerful thing. And it's a difficult thing. But you can't do a lot of things in life without the tool of money. Christ isn't saying to hate it. He's saying don't desire it. Don't love it. Don't be like the young man here, young rich ruler or rich ruler or whatever you want to call him. Set aside all other desires except for your desire for God. For sure, our understanding of wealth is crucial to who we are. If you see wealth as an indicator of status in the kingdom of God, uh, you're definitely wrong. If you see wealth as a tool by which, by which we can serve God, then you're more right in that statement. We inherit eternal life through responding to the actions of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We inherit eternal life because we let go of the empty trappings of this world and we grab hold of the treasure that is the kingdom of God. In this life, and in the next life. Look you carefully at what you uphold and what
what you cherish and hold close to your heart. Let that be Christ and Christ alone. To the glory of the Father. In the name of the Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you let go of what you need to let go of. May we let go of what is unnecessary. Amen and amen. Our next song is called Knowing You. There's nothing greater than knowing Jesus. Stand and join us. You may not know this one, but read the words. They're really precious.
Well, um, it's a heavy subject. But what we need is to love the Lord. May you go forth this week resurrected and renewed people, children of God. May you set aside those things those feelings and those desires that are not of God, that you may show love to the world, the love that God has for all of us. Go forth, children of God. To the glory of the Father, in the name of the Son, and with the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And amen.